Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. This is my sidekick here, Ella. Oh, she hasn't been in videos for a little while. I usually kick her out. It gets a little bit loud, but I digress. In today's video, we are going to be talking about plastic <laughs> and specifically seed starting plastic. I got asked this question over on Instagram. If you guys did not know, you can find me Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. You can also check me out guardiancanada.net. You can contact me there in the comments section. There's emails, you name it. You can contact me very many different ways, but people will contact me and ask me really quick questions, especially ones that they're concerned about. And one of the questions I've gotten, I think three or four times now, was whether or not using plastic to start seedlings or to grow in is safe. Now I did do a video on this a while back and in the video, it's an older one, um, we discussed a whole bunch of different things about plastics and plants and soil and all that fun stuff. But I thought it would be a great idea to revisit this because that was more geared towards container gardeners and people who are using pop bottles, that sort of thing to actually grow in. But what about the actual plastic containers you get from a grower or from the greenhouse? And especially the Jiffy Pods, <laughs> those are most definitely plastic. Biodegradable plastic, they say, even though they last for Ages. Plastic nonetheless, and whether or not you should start your seeds in this. So we're gonna break this down, of course, using science, and take a little bit of a look at whether or not this ends up in our soil and whether or not ultimately this plastic ends up in our plants. So the first question we have to ask is, what kind of plastics are our trays made from? And I'm actually kind of surprised by this. I try to look at the trays, the two most common trays you would find, which would be the pod, like the peat pod style, and then also, of course, this plastic plug style and the plastic plug style unfortunately doesn't really have a number on the recycle number it's supposed to but i'll show some close-ups it's kind of almost blocked out to be honest which is insane to me so i actually don't know what the recycle number on this is but the recycle number on the jiffy pod is a six so that is what we're looking for is that little recycle symbol and we're looking for the number inside of that i'll put up on the screen which ones are the food safe ones i cannot remember off the top of my head but essentially what that means is if it's food safe it's considered to not break down as quickly and end up in our food system now the main concern of plastics is something we call the phthalates and the reason for this is this is that soft malleable plastic we find in things like garden hoses for example and it has been shown to hyperaccumulate or accumulate inside of plants in particular things like lettuce strawberries um, leafy greens things of that nature so when it accumulates in the plant the next question is is it dangerous the quantities in which it does accumulate in the, the plant dangerous to consume and the answer is no, they haven't deemed it, <laughs> haven't deemed it as dangerous. Now, whether or not 30, 40 years down the road, we're going to readjust that thought, I'm not sure. But the moral of the story is that plastics do break down and plastics do break down and end up in your soil and then ultimately inside of your plants because in many times they are small enough to work their ways into the plant system. So how do we prevent this or how do we lessen the amount of plastic we end up actually consuming via the soil and plants? And the answer to this is multifaceted. There's abiotic factors that we can control things such as temperature and sun exposure will change or alter the plastic and degrade it over time ultimately all of which will eventually end up in our soil the next way to mediate or reclimate this in any way shape or form would be to use new trays or use trays that involve less plastic and what i mean by that is obviously we can't lessen the amount of plastic in the jiffy pod tray because it's just a big open thing of nothing in it so you could use things like a soil blocker which i'll leave a link for down below you ultimately want to reduce the sites in which the soil touches the plastic so this 72 cell plant tray all four corners are getting touched by plastic because 
the way the cell is designed. So there are ways to lessen our interfaces in which our cell reacts with the plastic. Then there are biotic factors, so living organisms that we can control that ultimately will change how plastic is broken down. So if we use things like mycorrhizal fungi in our seed starting kit, when it's in contact with so many surfaces of plastic, we increase our potential for plastic to be put into the soil because mycorrhizal fungi are just fungi and certain bacteria in general will slowly decompose the plastic around it. Fun fact, they have been finding soil microbes out there that have evolved now to actually decompose plastic because there's just so much plastic naturally <laughs> residing in the soil itself. Now, the government doesn't treat this as a serious issue whatsoever. Even Omnery or uh, organic certifications don't treat this very seriously either. Ultimately, the levels in plastic are so low, there's no cause for concern. So if you're an organic gardener or an organic grower and you're using plastic, for example, these trays, it doesn't affect your growing organically certification, despite the fact that it ends up in the plant, it's still considered organic produce. Now, I know that's incredibly hypocritical and some people are probably screaming and yelling at me. I don't make the rules, that's just what the rules are. And I think the last point when it comes to plastics and any of the soil and ultimately the plants is biodegradable plastics. So plastics that are labeled as biodegradable, biodegrade. And unfortunately, we've come, uh, we've have a Romeo Juliet scenario with biodegradable. We love the idea of biodegradable and we get excited about it. So we're more likely to purchase things that are biodegradable, including plastics. But ultimately what ends up happening is that everything that's biodegradable has to be degraded and separated into different bits and bobs. And the bits and bobs are chemical compounds, the original chemical compounds in which made up said tray. So what ends up happening is the chemicals just end up in the soil a bit quicker than they would if the tray wasn't biodegradable. So ultimately using biodegradable anything in a soil system plastic wise, it just, like I said, it breaks down and ends up as a chemical compound, separate chemical compounds given, but ultimately still ends up in the soil system. Now, one thing you may not realize is plastic, but technically has BPA, BPA in it, is the new fabric pots. So the new fabric pots, unless they're say hemp or something of that nature, are made with BPA. So if you guys did not know, BPA is not a food safe plastic and that is why a lot of water bottles and things, especially in when it first came out that they had to be removed from water bottles, it would say BPA free on them because they've been deemed dangerous. So just make sure that when you are purchasing things like cloth pots, from wherever they may be, Amazon, whatever the case is, just make sure they aren't made from plastic and they are made from hemp because the the cloth ones do contain BPA. And if you're using them for vegetable gardening or any form of produce, you do want to be careful. So the ultimate message here is that yes, plastic will end up in your soil and yes, plastic can be uptaken by plants and has been for all intents and purposes found in plant tissue, but our government or our scientists don't think it's in any dangerous level to the point that they still allow organically classified produce to be produced in plastic. So does it hurt the plants? No, the only one that would hurt the plants is BPA in high concentrations. But again, it's gonna be really difficult to even get into that wheelhouse. Ways to mitigate it would be to control abiotic factors, things like heat, and temp temperature, heat, and just the degradation of the actual plastic itself. Don't leave them out in the sun if you don't have to, especially the seed starting trays. If you wanna reuse those year after year, use them indoors, but then store them indoors or store them in a nice dark environment. Don't just leave them out in the front lawn. But I'm gonna to continue to use plastic to grow my seedlings in because it is literally Quite honestly, the only option, I guess you could use a newspaper that um, my understanding is they use vegetable inks now. Um, you could make your own paper pots. Absolutely, there's no reason why you couldn't. But yeah, just something to keep in mind, something to be aware of. Fortunately, this is just the world we live in. <laughs>
I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what video you would like to see next, whether it's houseplants or gardening content. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' ideas, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Yours, she is so noisy today. I was giving you a chance to be back on camera, and you're just ruining it for yourself. You're ruining it for yourself. The people are going to complain. They're going to complain. They're going to, they're going to, no, they're, you can't dance on camera. They're going to, they're going to complain. Just a fun fact, she's bringing up food out of her crop to feed me right now. That's wonderful. Very pretty. Very pretty, very, very pretty bird.